Hi, everyone. This is Don Davis, your host of Supply Chain Secrets. Just introducing the episode for today, and I think you're really going to like it. I had a lot of fun um, with our discussion. And today's topic was about women in shipping. And we had three guests, uh, Chrissy Van Niekirk from Maersk, April Zobel from the Andersons, and Karen Bridges from Nyshex. And um, we had a really great discussion. Um, we were we started off by talking about the shipping industry for women and what is it like today and you know just getting a sense of the current state of the union and then we talked about the changes that have happened over the past five to ten years and what what were the biggest impacts there then we talked a little bit about what the industry could do more um and were there other industries or or other places where they saw things that that resonated that we could adopt in in the shipping industry and then we went into each individual's own journey and and they shared some of the critical success factors that have been impactful uh, in their career journey. And then we talked about five or 10 years in the future. What does that look like for women in shipping and what would they like to see? Um, and then we talked a little bit about the consequences of like in male dominated industries and, and not being em embraceful of uh, women's opinions. What What's the impact there? And, and that was a really... Uh, interesting and fun discussion. And in the end, we uh, let our guests play podcaster and they were able to ask me some questions, um, which which was a lot of fun. But I think you're really going to like the episode and I encourage everyone, please listen to the whole show. It was really super impactful and powerful. So I hope you like it and uh, give it a listen. You are now listening to the Supply Chain Secrets Podcast with Don Davis. My name is Don Davis. I am the Senior Vice President of NBO Experience at NYSHEX and former executive of Hapag Lloyd and CMA CGM. And welcome to Supply Chain Secrets. Now, it might look a little different. Uh, you've been used to listening to the show. I used to have co-host Brian Most. Brian has moved on, and we wish Brian the best. He's a super guy, terrific guy, and uh, I really appreciate everything he's done for us in the show. But on today's show, I'm really excited because today's topic is women in shipping. And today I have three women in shipping as my guests. I have Karen Bridges from Nyshex, I have April Zobel from the Andersons, and I have Chrissy Van Niekirk from Maersk. So um, what I'd like to do is if we could just start with introductions and you could talk a little bit about yourself and what you do, and then we'll dive right into some topics. So Karen, let's start with you. Sure, thanks, Don. So my name is Karen Bridges. I am the Vice President of Global Operations at NYSHEX and have been with NYSHEX for the last year. Prior to NYSHEX, I was um, working for a carrier, Maersk, uh, for 20 years. So have around uh, 20 plus years in the shipping industry. Great. April, you want to go ahead? You got it. Uh, I'm April Zobel. I'm with the Andersons. I've been with the company um, prior to the acquisition with Lansing Trade Group. So about nine and a half years I've been with the organization. Um, I currently manage our um, container export team. I'm what we call a profit center manager, which means um, our international team rolls up through myself and another co-manager. Um, we export agricultural goods to Southeast Asia, North Asia, China and beyond. Um, little feather in our cap, we were the 15th largest exporter this year. Wow, that's exciting, awesome. Good stuff. And and Chrissy, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Chrissy Van Eekirk, and I work for Maersk. I'm currently the head of digital and forwarding sales, which means that my sales team covers both of our digital products, which are Maersk Spot and Twill, as well as sales for global freight forwarders, um, commodity shippers, and um, small to medium-sized forwarders. I've been with Maersk for 16 years, which is also known as my entire career. So um, I do love it here, and I had the opportunity to work with Karen before, so... It's a, it's a great place to be. Well, well, thank you all for joining this episode. And I'm really excited to talk about today's topic, women in shipping. And maybe April, we could start with you. And what I'd like to do is just for our listeners, how would you describe the shipping industry for women? I mean, what what's top of mind that for you? And as a second question, how would you describe this, the current state of the union? Uh, I think what I want to highlight most is that we're talking about it. And I think that that's like this big thing that hasn't happened in my tenure. Um, the last couple of years, we've seen a big movement towards us talking about women in shipping and supply chain and logistics, um, which is really exciting. But 
for nine years, we didn't talk about it. So I think that's kind of um, my nine years in the industry, at least. I think that's a really big shift in that we're really engaging diversity into the environment. Um, we're really asking women to be a part of the conversation from a bigger like scope. Um, I think even at some of the major conferences that I've attended this year, I've seen more women on stage um, sharing their leadership experience and their place in the industry. Um, but even aside from that, we're they're being thought leaders and experts in the field. So um, I think right now is this really exciting time to be a woman in the industry because we get to have, I think, a bigger voice and take a little bit of not center stage, but beyond the stage at least in times when we weren't in the past. So I think that covers like my opinion of the state of the union and the place that we're at. Um, I I look at it as an opportunity, quite frankly, um, to be, you know, what used to be one of the only women in the room in a lot of scenarios to now seeing others um, stand up on stage or be in the boardrooms. And that's just an exciting time. And um, I think it's an effort that I think about regularly on how I can bring more women into the environment or welcome them or make them feel comfortable in a room that they might not otherwise be. Yeah, I think that's really good perspective. And I think that, you know, we see that things are, are changing, or at least I feel like they're changing. Um, But again, I'm probably not the right person to ask. I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, but you know, you see like there's been international women's day, there's been international day for women in maritime. You see that Hapag Lloyd now has a female board member. And these are things that, You know, it it feels to me like it's changing, but I mean, let's look at the past five or 10 years and I'll pose this question to Karen. How much do you think it's changed or has it not really changed? Or is there anything that that comes to mind that's been the biggest impact as far as the changes with women in shipping? Yeah, I think it has changed. I think as April mentioned, we're talking about it more and diversity is at more at the forefront of conversations one kind of thing that I reflect on is when when I was growing up, I didn't think about having a job in supply chain, logistics, shipping, like that was not even on my radar. And speaking with younger women joining the industry today, they thought about that in high school and wanted to pursue a degree in you know supply chain logistics. And, and so I think there's just more awareness out there that this is a career that anyone can can be a part of and and women in particular can really come in strong and and make it make an impact uh, in this industry so i think that's really changed and evolved a lot over the last you know five to ten maybe more years yeah and i think i you know i might be in the industry the longest i'm sorry to say out of all of us um it's been now like i don't know over 25 years but um I think when, when, you know, I started a long time ago and, uh, yeah, there were container ships, they weren't like rowing boats or anything. It wasn't that long ago, but, um, it, it felt like it was a pretty male dominated industry. Right. And, and I think that that's changing, but I mean, Chrissy, I'll pose this question to you. I mean, what do you think the industry can do more? I think you see a lot of other industries and a lot of activity, um, I think shipping's changing, but is there anything that stands out to you if you think about other industries and things that they're doing that could be incorporated in the the shipping industry? Yeah, I think that's a really that's a really good question. I mean, I think the companies within the industry have to really look at their their policies towards women and how they can support them in the best way possible. I think for me at Maersk, a real game changer was when they decided to give a minimum maternity leave. So they said every woman at Maersk is going to get 18 weeks of paid maternity leave. And and that's that's actually life changing. You know, being able to come back to work, um, your child's, you know, four, four and a half months old rather than six weeks old or eight weeks old. Um, that makes it a lot easier to come back and that keeps women coming back. So I think, you know, the individual companies within the industry can say, what are we doing to support women, keep them at the table, make sure that they feel comfortable when they um return to work, that they can have a family and have a career at the same time, um, that that's, that's really feasible. And then I think the second thing is, I would love to see more women focused groups, um, or, or meetings within the conferences that I attend. So I feel like 
I've been to a lot of conferences over the years. You know, we've all been to um, TPM, um, AgTC, uh, breakable conferences, and there's more and more women there. But how can we lift up their voices and make them more visible um, and, and help people see that these women are really having an impact at a higher level, higher than we've ever seen before? How, how do we lift them up? I think that's that's really important. Yeah, that's a great call out. And I think that, you know, it's important for people just to have that awareness and thought process. Like, I think it's things are changing, but I think to specifically partition some time to talk about it in a forum. I mean, we have all these great events in our industry and it's great that we're finally getting back together and able to do things in person, but it also creates an opportunity to talk about this topic more. And like I said, partition some time to really make it impactful. Um, So what I'd like to do at this point is I think it'd be interesting for our listeners. I think you're all very successful and you've all had your own journey and maybe you could talk a little bit and I'll start with you, April. Can you talk about your own journey in your career and what has been critical for your success? And if you were going to get advice to other women, if I'm a young up and comer in this industry, what, what kind of advice would you give somebody who's, who's new to that? That's really fully loaded, Don. Um, (laughs) But I'm going to try and break it down. Um, I think there's a couple things I really want to highlight on that. I started right out of college in the logistics industry. I started at DHL working on a dock with independent contractors and route drivers. And I had to have, um, you know, the wherewithal to probably stand on that dock and know what I was talking about and um, accept confrontation and being challenged for who I was and what my knowledge was. And I think the way that I succeeded early on, or at least found my place, was I had male leaders who didn't see me as different, but saw me as somebody who could take um, the opportunity and run with it. So I think just early on in my career, I worked for male leaders who wanted to lift me up and give me opportunity and um, not really treat me different, but welcome me, which I think is super important. Um, I then went to a couple other different logistical stops on my journey to the Andersons and being here the longest I'm in ag and I'm in shipping which are two very male dominated industries and there's this one like thing that I keep coming back to as being like the key to my success or at least current success is that I didn't ask for permission I think that that's something that we often struggle with is what's the path for me and who's going to lay it out for me and I work at an entrepreneurial company and that just hasn't been who we are in a here's your path and past this milestone and you get to have this title or you get to be in this room um it's a carve your own path and bring us an idea and and we'll, we'll support you in every way possible and i think that that is one piece of advice i would give every woman out there or newcomer or somebody who's kind of wanting to make their way is um don't ask for permission i think be willing to to step up at the plate have an have an idea have a thought process have own it. And I think that's the hardest thing for a lot of us to really get behind is if you don't see somebody like you in the room, how do you know that what you're saying has value or has the opportunity or will be accepted? And so I think that's a really long winded way for me to say is just step up to the plate, but don't ask for permission to be there because you already have the permission. Yeah, I think that's great. And I think, I mean, the first thing you mentioned was having leaders that are open, right? It's people that aren't going to see you differently. And I think that's the first step, but, you know, your advice about, you know, being creative and taking your own path and, and willing to put ideas out there is is really important. And I think that's, that's super advice. And I I think if you find that, you know, you're, you're somewhere where a company's not open to those ideas, then that kind of tells you something that, you know, maybe they're not ready and they're not where they need to be. Right. Um, But, but Karen, over to you. I mean, can you talk about your journey and, and what, what, what do you think critical success factors have been for you? Yeah, so similar to April, I mean, it's such a loaded question, and I feel like I could, I could talk about this for a really long time. I think there's, like, you own your own journey, so you are responsible for your own path. And, and sometimes that means making hard decisions. Sometimes that means taking risks. Sometimes that means, um, you know, moving your family, you know, it, doing something maybe outside of of the box, but you just, for me, it's always been going with my gut and my authentic self and and realizing like I'm in control of my journey and I'm gonna navigate the the ship the way that that I want to. 
Um, but I think one other thing that is really super, super important is like supporting each other. And I, we have a, um, a women's network at NYSHEX that we're building kind of grassroots with the women of NYSHEX. And, and we talk about supported women support women. Um, and, and I think April and Christy are both, you know, friends and have been super supportive of my career. And, and I feel, you know, similar. I've, I've tried to support them in, in ways over the last couple of years. But I think it's super important that we lift each other up and we're there for each other um, because it's, it is an industry that can be intimidating Um, April, you mentioned it, like being sometimes the only woman in the room, like we've all, all three of us have been there many times. And and I think that can be intimidating, but just having that support and reassurance from each other is, um, is really critical to success for, for all of us. Yeah, that's such a great call out and something that, you know, maybe I haven't had the awareness of, right? I mean, thinking about that, that, you know, there's been times where there's been one woman in the room. Right. And, and how challenging that might be and intimidating might be like, oh, wow, you know, I'm surrounded by all these people. But, you know, having the support and knowing that people are behind you and encouraging you, I think, is is really important and valuable. And I think from my perspective, you know, maybe I have to do a better job in those meetings to be more supportive and open and really kind of like draw that out of somebody in those situations, because, you know, I'm not thinking about wow, this is probably really tough for them. You know, I'm not, I'm not in that environment. There's, I mean, today I'm in a meeting with, I'm the only guy here, which is fine, but, um, but surely very intimidating for you, right? I mean, (laughs) I mean, you know, it's something where I, I think it's just important to have that kind of awareness, right? That, that, you know, I think that as a male in this industry, when you're in those situations, just kind of acknowledging it and just being open, because I think, you, you want to see that the people in that room are going to embrace the fact that you're there and not, not treat you differently. And, and I think that's something where, you know, I could, I could certainly, you know, call that out when, when those situations arise. Um, so Chrissy, can you talk a little bit about your journey as well? I mean, I think we've covered some great stuff here, but, but what about yourself? What, what stands out as, as a critical, critical success factors? So I think for me, it was kind of learning that I didn't have to emulate someone else. I didn't have to be like a male leader. Um, I didn't have to operate in the same way that they did. I could really lean into who I am as an individual. And that actually made me more successful and a better leader and more authentic. And I think, you know, a lot of women go through this where they get pigeonholed into, oh, you're too emotional, or, you know, it's such an easy thing to say, when, um, you know, a woman becomes passionate about something, but I realized probably midway through my career that 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 passion came from the fact that I cared deeply about the people who work for me and I cared deeply about the work. And, and that was part of what made me good at my job. And so that harnessing that, being aware of that, that was sort of a game changer for me because it I you know, I was able to take that into what I did, um, show up truly authentic for my team. And I found that people that I worked with really connected with that. So that's my, that's sort of like my big advice is, you know, lean into who you are, because the, the, the thing that makes you an individual is what you bring to the table. And that makes you unique. And that's why we need more diversity at the table, because each of those individual voices has something to offer. Um, so that realization for me, that was, that was big for my career, I think. Yeah, that's, that's great. And, and as you were talking, I was thinking about, you know, how, how important it is for at first to have, you know, those, those leaders as, as April talked about, and then, you know, talking about the support, right. That you have, because then it becomes easier to lean in who you are, right? Like you, you, I think just by having this conversation and, and hearing the kind of support that, that people give each other, you know, it, it gives you the courage and the opportunity to say like, Hey, I'm going to go get it the next time I'm, I'm in this industry where, you know, when I started, uh, you know, in the nineties, um, it was probably a lot different and there weren't that many women and it. And, you know, I didn't really think about how hard it must be, but I think it's so great to hear this kind of support and network that's out there. And I think it's really important just to keep building on that. Right. So that people don't feel like, oh, I'm not supported or this is too difficult or I'm the only person here. And then you, it's, it's muted because I think, 
you know, having different ideas and different ways of doing things is so important today that we can't continue to do things in the ways we've always done them before. But, you know, if you're only getting male ideas, then, you know, you might be missing some opportunities to do things differently and think creatively and things like that. So I think that's really great insight. Um, so if, if, you know, Karen, I'm going to go back to you for a second. And if we start to think about the future, you know, we talked a lot about where we are today and, and your own journeys, but if you were going to, you know, build a time machine and go five or 10 years in the future, what would you want to see? Like, what, what does good look like for the shipping industry? For the shipping industry overall or women in shipping? Women shipping, okay. sorry. Yeah, women shipping, so... Sorry. Because they're both very different answers. Um, so <laughs> women in shipping, I, I mean, April has heard a little bit of this and, and I've shared it with some of the, the women in our network at NYSHEX. Like I see this huge opportunity and it goes completely in line with what, what Chrissy mentioned before. I, I've done my research and there's not really any like global women in shipping networks. You have individual pockets of them at carriers like Maersk and CMA. You have them at a Walmart. You have them at Ikea, Flexport. Um, so you have those internally in within organizations, but there's not much out there it, really at all um, in the industry. And, and I think one of, one of my true goals and ambitions is to take this women of NYSHEX network that we've created and like expand it out into the industry. Um, I think there's opportunities to have events. I was like petitioning that we should have like a coffee or something at the last TPM, but um, there wasn't a lot of time to, to get it together. But, but I think there's, we are in a unique position at NYSHEX as this neutral third party that we're able to bring everyone in, everyone from a shipper side, a consignee side, a big BCO, a MBO, a carrier, like there's nothing is off limits. And I think there's so much opportunity to learn from each other, network, gain insights, gain inspiration. Um, so I, that is my like side goal, my side gig goal. Um, to my success at NYSHEX to, to really try and take something that we're building internally and launch it into the, the entire shipping industry to drive that change. Yeah, that's really a great call out. Um, because if you do think about it, it is a little bit, you know, in certain pockets, right? And, and to pull it all together more holistically, which I think, I think it's really cool that we're sitting here. We work in three different parts of the industry. Um, you're three different successful women. So that's cool. But like, how do we pull it together on a much broader scale? I think that's, uh, that's really important. Um, now, Chrissy, I, I, over to you. I mean, what, what do you think about looking into the future? Is there anything that stands out that like, that you would like to see in the next five to 10 years? Yeah. I mean, I think for me, I would just love to see more female representation on the boards of um, the companies within our industry. Um, I would love to see more women on the regional leadership teams. I think that's really where we haven't been able to make a lot of progress is taking women from you know, first level managers to senior directors to vice presidents. Um, the percentage of women at those levels it really drops off. So how do we support women in a way that um, that really increases the share of women at that level? Because I think... It's even for me, you know, looking at my leader or his leader, their work-life balance, work balance, it's, you know, that, that, do, that scares me a little, right? Because it's not a good picture of how we can, we can maintain our family life and have a job at that level, right? So I think we need more women at that level to show us that this is possible. And I take that responsibility seriously in my role to show my team that we can do this, right? It's possible. We can have a good work-life balance and, and be in a senior managerial role. Um, but but there's just not enough of it out there. So for me, in five to 10 years, I would see, I would love to see just a lot more women um, at the, you know, the senior, senior leadership level. Yeah, that's so interesting um, because when you're talking, I wasn't really thinking about it from that perspective, right? Thinking about like the work-life balance and just really demonstrating that that you can do it, right? Because <laughs> if 
if if it's not there, then it's like, oh, this is an impossible task. And and I think it's really important for other people to see that, right? Because I think it's inspiring then that you can see like, hey, I can do this. I can aspire to do this sort of thing. But if it's never there, then then it just becomes a lot harder to get to that point, right? Um, so April, over to you. I mean, if five to 10 years, if you have a time machine, what does women in shipping look like? What does good look like in this industry? I think good looks like more of these. And maybe it's not the norm, Maybe it is the norm, right? Like maybe there's um, a regular women in shipping um, podcast that we get to highlight and see other leaders at other organizations or other parts of the industry that I don't know or see. I think that we've seen, um, like I said, several more on stage, but how do we highlight what they do and how do we continue to put them um, in the social so that our, the new women who are entering the industry see that, that it is attainable and that it's not just one-offs here and there. Um, I think there's two other pieces of this that I've thought about as we were talking. Um, I was in a room last week where a male called out the fact that I was the only woman in the room. And I think it's like this call to action. If there's more men who maybe recognize or think about that, and they don't have to verbalize it, but I think what you said earlier too, Don, about, um, you know, I didn't think about the fact that that happens. I think that's so, that's the norm for me that people don't think about that. And I used to take that as an opportunity and say, wow, that's really cool that you didn't have to think about um, that I was a woman, that my opinion was biased towards my gender. Um, But I, I actually think I have to flip the script personally and think more about that so that I can help other women engage or be willing to step up and and enter those rooms or have a comfortable seat at the table. I was talking with a young woman a couple months ago and she had said to me, it was like her first foray into the shipping industry. And she said like, what do I, what do I get to wear when I'm in that room? Like, do I wear makeup or no makeup? And it's things that I hadn't thought about. Like, the most men wear khakis and a blue shirt. And like, that's the extent of their thought process to walk into a boardroom. And, I, you know, I think that I had never thought about that, but if we have people who are asking those questions, um, they're not comfortable in that room. So how do we make them comfortable? So that's just my like antidote on, I think I have to flip my script a little bit and um, coach or be a willing participant to help the young women feel comfortable in every room, every scenario, and every opportunity. I, I, I love that call out so much about the dress because I think, you know, guys get off pretty easy, right? <laughs> it's like tie or no tie, right? That's the debate. Yeah. Like, okay. And okay, maybe jacket or no jacket. But for women, that's totally different, right? And I think that's something that people need to be aware of, right? Because I, I, I don't have that problem, right? I don't, I don't, I mean, I think there's just a lot more options out there. And just to really, you know, think about that and be more thoughtful. It, it is, I think, in that way, way a lot tougher. Um, well, so what, think about, sorry. Go ahead. I was, think about like the giveaways at a conference. It's a large Nike polo golf shirt. <laughs> it looks great. It looks I mean, great. <laughs> you're, you're sort of, it's a large men's Nike golf polo. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I don't know how many times I've come home and I want to just single out Nike. golf <laughs> polo. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I, I think that there's just, it, it's innate in who the industry is in the assumption that, um, this fits all checks, all boxes. Um, and you know, for years I've come home and offered them to a different trader on the floor saying, Hey, who wants a polo <laughs> that I don't need to have? <laughs> no, but that's, that's so great to, to talk about that. Right. Because I mean, you don't think about that. Like you have these goofy polos sitting there and it's like, well, guess what? There there's a gender here that can't use that, that, that just that right. doesn't appeal to them. So like, why, why do that? Or, I mean, at least have like two lanes or two options or something, but, but to yeah. your point, I've seen it a lot, especially like raffles and things like that. And it's just, you know, I think there's some opportunities for um, companies to do a better job in that space because I, I don't, I don't think people are thinking about it enough, but talking about it here is hopefully creating some awareness. that's going to help. Um, so I'm going to throw out a question here, and this is to whoever wants to answer it. And just to our listeners, we usually send our guests some questions in advance so they have an idea of what we're going to talk about. It's not scripted, it's a conversation, but this one I haven't thrown out, or I, I didn't send it in advance. So uh, apologies for the spontaneity here. But I was hoping maybe we could spend a minute talking about the consequences of being male-dominated and not 
including a female perspective. I, I'm sure you've seen some of that in your career. And can you just talk about that? Because I think it'd be really valuable for men who are listening to kind of hear like what they're missing and, and the impact that's had on you in your career. But whoever wants to take that question, fire away. Hmm. Or maybe, maybe you need to think about it for a minute. But I, I was just sitting here thinking and like, you know, I think these are important points, right? And I haven't always been aware of like some of the things that we've talked about. And I think it's illuminating. And if you don't do these kinds of things and you don't include people, then, you know, you're, you're, I think you're missing out, but I mean, you, I think seen how this industry has been in the past and, but what are the consequences? Like, let's say we were to stop today. What, what would be some of the consequences of, of that reaction? Because you've seen these things in the industry and I want to use this as more of an inspiration for people like, Hey, it's not mission accomplished. I know we have International Women's Day. I know we have these things that are happening, but we can't stop. We have to keep pushing forward. And here's why. So one of the things that, that really sticks out to me is, you know, over the past two years, being a being a female leader, all of the things that they're saying, you know, leaders need to do, you need to have high emotional intelligence, you need to feel empathy, you need to express that you need to be vulnerable in front of your team. These are things that are actually strengths for women, you know, where they're the things that maybe some men in leadership haven't traditionally done or don't feel comfortable doing. So I think if we if we pause today, and we didn't add more women to leadership, especially in shipping, then we we miss out on being able to retain really wonderful talent coming into the industry because the the young people who are coming into the industry today they have a high expectation for engagement for connection to a mission um, I mean we're seeing turnover now you know if if a young person doesn't feel like they're in a position where they can make a difference, where they're being recognized, where they're engaged, they will go somewhere else because they have that option. So I think it's really exciting to be a woman in leadership and shipping and, and be a model for how we engage with our teams through empathy, through emotional intelligence, bringing people along on a, you know, a transformation journey. All of these things are things that I feel like women have, you know, innate um and and they're able to to express that so i think if we don't continue to get more women at the table we really miss out on a chance to to build up young talent and bring new people into the industry yeah i love that point i mean i think um over time you know you started to talk about things like empathy and emotional intelligence and when i started in the industry that was not like top of mind for really anyone right and to think about like Hey, why, why don't we bring in people where they are more likely to be strong in this category? Because if you really want to develop it and it's really important, then you you need a cross section of people to do that. And again, I think you're missing out on an opportunity. Okay, uh, Karen, April, anything? Yeah, I just on? I was going to add really quick. I think it's important that it's not seen as like a box checking exercise, like woman and leadership team check we've done our you know due diligence when it comes to diversity it's really about diversity of thought like expanding on kind of what chrissy said like the you know innate um strengths that women bring to the table as leaders like so i think it's just balancing the thought process to make sure that you're really building the the strongest team possible and i think you know, two parts of that, I think, um, and to give a little bit of a shout out to Brian, your your former uh, podcast co-host, we had a conversation about it a couple months ago where we, we were reflecting on some of the initial uh, members at NYSHEX, like April, and, and many, if not all of our initial members were women. And thinking about that, being, you know, women sometimes are more creative thinkers, willing to think outside the box, try something different. Uh, and, and that can be really good for business. So I think there's a diversity of thought, there's an ability to, to drive, you know, maybe some, some uniqueness or, or pivot the business in a way that traditionally men wouldn't, wouldn't think of. And then just a little bit adding on to Chrissy's point, I've seen it so many times before, like you have a male dominated senior leadership team and there is a town hall or there is a meeting and it, it almost comes across like as like a boys club, like jokes and, and 
And then they're going to go play golf and go have drinks. And I think just the optics of that to the organization and the the women and and men that have ambitions to to grow their careers, but particularly the women look at that and it seems um, sort of unattainable. So I think just a reminder to men that like if you are on a senior leadership board that is male dominated, like think about the optics that you you give off in, in these type of situations because um, it can be intimidating and, and we want to be more inclusive and bring in that diversity of thought. Yeah, I really love that point of like not checking a box, right? That that you're not just going through the motions here, that you really want to have this point of reflection. And I think that's an important takeaway is to say when you have these things or have these events, how much are we really reflecting on this and saying, what could we do or what could we do differently? Because to your point, like, you know, it's all jokey and golfy and these kinds of things. And it kind of, you know, the optics are terrible, right? And and that's not sending the right message. So I, I, I think that's a great point. Uh, April, anything you want to add on that point? I think these ladies covered it really well. I will add a very small snippet, maybe. I think the consumer is changing so much. I think that social media, um, for all its good and bad, is also lifting women up and empowering them um, at a very young age even. So I think if the shipping industry were to stop today and say, well, we've done our part, like there were some women on the stage at TPM, yay us, like we did it, and that was it, and that's where we stopped, um, I think about all of the talent that we would lose to other industries where they would see that they were being lifted up, where they would see that they are welcome at the table, where they would see the industry changing or accepting work-life balance um, in a different way. So I think that social media lends this light into this other world where um, it might be a little easier or there might be more women. And so I think we just would lose talent of really great leaders and um, this, this section of women. And I think you might even lose women at the table that they're in you know, today in the shipping industry if, if, it, can, if it doesn't go anywhere. Um, and it, you know, full stop, we checked our box. So I think that's something um, for us to think about is, um, you know, we haven't done enough yet. I don't think any of us here have done enough yet to welcome new women. And I think that this is this really great opportunity, maybe even for the four of us to go out and we're being voices that are going to be publicized, hopefully on social media, LinkedIn, saying like, hey, come to the table. We did it. You can too. I think it's important that we step up to the plate and do that. Yeah, I think that is such a terrific point because I mean, the industry as a whole has a lot more attention, right? People are talking about supply chain. My neighbors are like, hey, I can't get this at Target or something. You know, you know about supply chain. Talk to me about this. And so it's just a lot more visible than it's ever been. And that awareness is creating interest, right? And and also, I mean, it's great to see that the industry is a lot more profitable, particularly on the carrier side. So there's now more money floating around here. So there's a lot more opportunity here. And since we have so much attention, it's important that we do something here and be welcoming because otherwise, to your point, we're missing out on an opportunity. And I just want to um, ask you a question here um, because I think we're talking about it and you have some great advice and great points. I'm hoping we can encourage our listeners when they see these posts on LinkedIn and stuff that they can reach out to you. I mean, just drop you a line on LinkedIn because I think, again, that whole point of support that we talked about earlier, it's, it's important that you know, we're able to embrace our listeners because I think there's there's people hopefully listening to this that are getting inspired. I mean, I'm I'm pretty fired up right now. I mean, I think this is really cool. And and I'm hoping that that through people listening to the show are just like, hey, I want to do this, but maybe I'm in an environment where I don't have this forum or I don't have this network. I have to start somewhere. Can I reach out to you? What are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, great. So that'll be one of our takeaways when we do our post. We got to make sure that uh, we're we're inviting others. Um, okay, so we've been talking for a while, and I really appreciate all your input. Um, before we go, we uh, usually have a segment where we allow our guests to play podcaster, and they can ask me any question they want. Um, it's a little difficult for me because this is never planned; it's completely unscripted. But I'm happy to take any questions if you have anything that you'd like to ask me. Okay, Don, I have a question for you. Oh boy. When you think about women in the industry and you think about now all of us here in this room talking to you today and our listeners, um, what do you think is one thing as a male leader in the environment you could have done differently or will do differently as a takeaway from today? Well, I, I think, you know, the first 
point I would say is that I have a lot more awareness um, of that, you know, there's things I can do that the thing we talked about earlier about just recognizing if there's only one woman here, or maybe recognizing when there's no women there, right? And saying like, hey, you know, in this meeting, you know, maybe we're missing an opportunity here. And being more reflective of things that we do and not not asking women specifically for feedback and say like, Hey, April, what did you think? We just had that town hall. Did, did you feel, does it resonate with you? Like, I don't think I've ever specifically asked that type of question, but now here talking to the three of you, I think that's an important piece is that just to really seek out the, the opinions of women, like be very deliberate. Don't just ask for feedback and say like, Hey, what'd you guys think? Listen to me. What did you guys think? Right. How terrible of me. But that's a point. Right. Like I have to do a better job of that and say, like, hold on a second. What did you women think? Like I. I so my main takeaway is I have to be a little a lot more deliberate in my actions to include women because I'm probably not doing enough, honestly. And I think listening to all of you has been um, really cool and inspirational for me. That's awesome. Thank you. A any other questions you want to ask me while we're all together? That is kind of what I was going to ask you too. And, and I love, I mean, I love your answer because I think that's really, that's the definition of being an ally, right? You know, so then you're, a, you're an ally for women who are in your industry and in your company. And, um, and, you know, it's something we should all endeavor to be, to be an ally to other women and an ally to traditionally underrepresented groups. So I think that's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. yeah well, Oh, I just—I was just agreeing. We're we're all aligned. <laughs> well, I, I, that's great, and 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 thanks for that because um, again, I think through through talking to you, it's been uh, very illuminating for me as a in a leadership position. And uh, you know, I what I would like to do is invite you back for a show, and and Karen can can challenge me and be like, Don, you never asked me a single question after a meeting. <laughs> you know, you, I, you will not be able to say that. I can assure you, but. But I, I, I really want to try and do more. Um, well, listen, it's been a lot of fun having you on the show. I had a great time. Um, and and thank you for, for participating. And to our listeners, don't forget, uh, give us feedback, rate us, review us, wherever you find our podcast, Apple, Spotify, or wherever you download our show. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Supply Chain Secrets Podcast. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast network.